This keyboard is about to change the keyboard scene. This is called the Wuting 60HE and it's becoming crazy popular recently because of all the technology inside the keyboard. You see, normally companies approach me to review their keyboards and I usually just ghost them. But this, this is different because I went to Wuting to ask them for a keyboard. So no, this is not a sponsored video, far from it. In this video, I'm going to show you what makes this keyboard so good, test this keyboard to its limits, and prove to you why that this keyboard is going to be changing gaming keyboards forever. Let's start with why this keyboard is so much different than your normal mechanical keyboard. And that will be this, the kind of switches it uses. You see, normal mechanical keyboards uses a leaf as the contact point for where the click is registered. So when the two metal pieces contact, it activates the switch, or actuates. That leaves a bit of a dead zone before the key is registered. This dead zone is very important to, to remember that. There are also other keyboards, mostly gaming keyboards, that uses optical switches, like the Razer Huntsman. Optical switches uses lasers and the blockage of light to register a key press, decreasing the delay between the keystroke and it registering as a key press in-game. Well, Wu Ting said screw this, they threw all traditional ways of making a switch out of the window and incorporated hall sensors into their keyboards. What are hall sensors you may ask? Well, it's a good thing I did the research for you. A hall effect sensor, or simply hall sensor, is a type of sensor which detects the presence and magnitude of a magnetic field using the hall effect. Now what that means in English is that there is a magnet under every switch on the keyboard and accompanying that a hall sensor under every switch. And that's probably why they are charging you $180 for what is essentially a plastic keyboard with unfortunately really average keycaps. But what these switches allow you to do is to change the actuation point of the switch to anywhere on the switch with a 0.1mm degree of accuracy. To you Americans, it's uh, really small. So you can have the keyboard actuate at the bottom of your keystroke or with barely any force at all. That practically eliminates the dead zone present in almost every other keyboard. Which means this keyboard can essentially actuate with the lightest force. I'm kidding by the way, that's not actually how it works. Now with these switches comes three new features which I'll be presenting off right now. Have you ever played a racing game with your keyboard but you realise that your keyboard only allows you to either accelerate at full speed or not at all? Don't want to buy a steering wheel and a pedal setup to just get precise acceleration and steering? BAM! Wooting! These switches allow analog input which basically allows you to steer and accelerate all throughout the switch with precise acceleration. It kind of works like a trigger on a Xbox or PS4 remote. You can actually bind up to four different key presses into one key. Now it's not just like a normal macro, it actually binds to four different parts of the switch. This could be useful for binding two tools into one in Photoshop where a half press gives you an eraser and a full press gives you the brush. Or you could bind keys in Overwatch where you perform a whole string of combos with one press of a key. This is basically just advanced macroing. Rapid Trigger Okay, those features were cool and all, but here comes the feature that matters to me the most. And that is called Rapid Trigger. What Rapid Trigger does is that instead of having one fixed actuation point like a traditional switch, it makes the actuation point dynamic. Dynamic Island. <laughs> it's really hard to explain with words, but basically anytime the switch is being pressed down, it actuates. When the switch is then detected going back up, it resets the actuation point to whenever it first detected it going back up, and you can press it down again immediately, so it doesn't need to go all the way back up. This allows you to spam the key as many times as your finger can press without retracting the key back to its original neutral state. To demonstrate this, Alright guys, so I have this really scientific test which I like to call the therapy massage gun test. Basically, we're going to be smashing the keyboards at max speed and we're going to be testing the normal keyboard versus the Wooting keyboard and see how fast the keystrokes can be registered with rapid trigger. So on a normal keyboard, we have uh, 250 BPM. It's definitely not the limit of the keyboard, but it's inconsistent because the key actuation point is always at the same place. Oh my god! Wait, so as you can see, the previous keyboard did 250 BPM uh, inconsistently, while this keyboard did 1700 BPM really consistently actually, if you look at the graph. I can see this feature being useful for jiggle peeking in Valorant, a bee hopping in CSGO, okay, and the most obvious of them all, Osu. Okay, have you seen what this keyboard has done to the Osu community? The third highest ranking player on Osu as of now, Eterna, got his hands on the Wooting 60HE and broke the world record for the highest player in Osu with this. That's 300 BPM, by the way, the beats per minute. Wait, did I say he broke the world record? Not even six days later, Amrak, the top player of Osu, broke that world record with a higher PV play. I mean, 
that that could be because he also had a Wooting, or it could have been a good day. You know, he he might have a good gaming chair. I don't know. It may be coincidence, but it might be the Wooting. This is the equivalent of giving Ilya Melanin a new pair of Nikes and being able to do quad axles in his sleep and probably a quintuple axle next week. Or giving LeBron James a new pair of shoes where he can land full court shots two courts away. Okay, not my best analogy, but you, you get the point. Okay, but the thing is, this keyboard is really good if you know how to use the keyboard. What I mean by that is if you haven't hit the skill limit of your current keyboard, this keyboard is not going to feel any much different. I personally unboxed this keyboard and used it on stream the other day, twitch.tv slash squashyboy, and I could barely tell a difference. Yes, this keyboard was fast for certain situations, but it's like giving a beginner chef a really good knife. He's still not going to be able to use it. So the bottom line for this keyboard. This keyboard for Osu, broken. This keyboard for Friday Night Funkin, broken. This keyboard for a dance of fire and ice, probably broken. This keyboard for competitive FPS shooters. Not broken, but really, really good. Overall, I think what we have here is probably the best gaming keyboard you can buy right now. And probably get it in three months because of the amount of people that have been queuing up for this keyboard. If you want to pre-order this broken keyboard for yourself, you can actually use my link down below. It is an affiliate link, but I promise you I was not paid by Wooting to do this video, nor did they even want me to do the video. Remember, I, I did approach them. And yeah, subscribe to the channel because in the next video, I'm going to be modding the hell out of this keyboard. It, it should be here if I'm done with the video. If not, I'll probably link it to some random vlog or my first video as a kid. Okay, pro probably not the second one. Probably the first one. Click it, please.